What did you make of uh, the first night of the Democratic National Convention? Well, every national convention, whether it's Republican or Democrat, the whole purpose of it is endorsements and uh, making positive comments and uh, praising uh, presidential and vice presidential candidates. So there's nothing special about this convention either. It's the same thing that happens at every national convention. Uh, as far as Joe Biden's exit is concerned, um, I know he's been he's been in, in politics for 52 years, but has he done enough? I have mixed feelings on the social justice front. He may have done well. You know, for instance, he's, he's uh, strengthened the Affordable Care Act. He's also pardoned a lot of... Uh, uh, federal offenses related to, relating to marijuana. His executive order is what helped women preserve reproductive rights. So there are many things on, on a social justice front that he has done right. But on the economic front, Biden, to me, has failed as a president, unfortunately. I hate to say it, but that's the case on, on the economic front as well as on keeping up a global order. Because if you look at wars during this time, we have had the Ukraine-Russia war. We have had the Palestine-Israel war. We have had the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan the rise of China, the issues in Taiwan and Hong Kong, all of these were never to be seen under Trump's presidency. And the other thing is uh, pure economics. If you look at inflation, it has gone up at least three times under, under Biden's presidency. The national debt has gone up by 12 trillion under his presidency. Gas prices have multiplied. So all of those, uh, to me, are the, are the negatives, but on a social justice front, he's done a good job. Uh, if you compare the RNC and the DNC, the more popular names are in support of Kamala Harris, which which would definitely help her cause. Uh, as for the RNC, the unfortunate thing is J.D. Vance's uh, unpopular rating. An ABC poll suggested uh, the other day that he was the least favorable uh, vice presidential candidate of the 21st century, which is bad news for Trump. A few weeks ago when it was uh, Biden versus Trump, and after that disastrous performance in the debate, it looked like Trump was going to wipe the floor with Biden. But have the tables turned on Trump with Kamala Harris coming into the picture and replacing Biden? I'm a professor and sometimes when I correct papers, I'll tell you the logic behind this. When I correct papers, I get 10 or 12 papers on the trot that are really, really bad. And all of a sudden, I get an average paper, which could be the 13th paper, and I really rate it higher compared to the other papers. This is sort of what happened with Kamala and Biden because Biden's debates, Biden's policies, uh, the economy under Biden, everything unfortunately wasn't doing that great. So all of a sudden when Kamala came into the picture, her favorability went up from 28% to 44% in two weeks among independents. That's a bad sign for Trump. The second thing is among the six swing states in the U.S., uh, although I mentioned the economy, the, in the swing states, the research shows that they're not concerned about the economy. They are concerned about reproductive rights. They're concerned about Medicare for all, all of which are also going to support Kamala Harris. But I do think it's going to be a tighter election than last time. Trump definitely will get uh, more votes than last time, but Kamala will give him a run for the money. It'll be a very, very interesting and historic election. It will be an interesting and historic election. And well, as a woman, I would certainly love to see that glass ceiling smashed to think it's 2024 and the United States is yet to have a woman president.